Hello everybody and welcome back to this playthrough of Dark Souls 2. Uh, this short episode we're just going to be heading down to No Man's Wharf, uh, getting that bonfire squared away, and then taking care of Luke and Teal. Now everybody's going to go, oh you shouldn't kill her, she's a fenceless girl, why you kill Luke and Teal like that? But there's a good reason behind it. Uh, the last time I fought the Flexile Sentry, I had summoned Luke and Teal for a little bit of assistance. We got all the way down there and made it all the way through. She was at nearly full health, ready to go for the fight. As soon as I walk through the door, and you know, the, the thing starts coming at me, I expect within about three seconds Lucatiel to come in. What happens? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Lucatiel did not help me at all. She's staying on the other side of the door till the end of the fight. So that was absolutely wonderful. And I have still not forgiven her for it. But no, seriously, I just want the sword. That's the only reason why. So anyways, let's go and give this a shot. Alright, we're gonna be probably skipping some of the... No, maybe not. You know what, there is a decent armor set here I might uh, put a piece or two on. I think there's an armor set here, I can't remember. Son of a gun. Alright, that's better. I'm just gonna be pumping the Estus. There's nothing really big coming up that we have to worry about. The shield is a personal choice. I don't know why, ever since uh, my first playthrough of this game, I always loved this shield. I mean, I could have went and bought one of the other ones, but the thing I do really love about it is that it is super lightweight, which is really important. Old Knight Halbert. Forget this. I hear somebody walking around. Oh, they must be down there. There he is, that's the guy right there. That that was weird. He used a single jab there. Yeah, so on... Oh, wait a minute. Hang on a second. That's... That one. Is there something down here? Okay. So my last playthrough of Dark Souls that I was doing solo, um, I was just using the normal Ultra Great Sword and uh, just doing a mega strength build. No, nothing there. But before I got that sword, what I was using was the Bastard Sword plus 10, which does a shit ton of damage. I was really liking it. And uh, I plan to start off a lot of builds using it, just because it's really easy to get first thing. And once you get a couple of shards into it, it really does power up nice. Oh, that's the one nice thing about the Ring of Restoration. If you know you're not going to be fighting for a minute, 
it saves you all your healing stuff. Let's see. I think it's down here, actually. Yep. There it is. Alright, so we might be plopping some of that on coming up next here. I don't know. I gotta see how heavy the sword is before we do anything. I really wish they put something there. Maybe that'd be a nice spot for a little DLC. That'd be cool. I like the item placement so far in this game, though, and the times I've played through it, I've, I've uh, really liked it. In Dark Souls 1, I love the items themselves, but the item placement astounded me sometimes. I mean, there was that one uh, spot in Lower Undeadburg where there was two armor sets about 70 feet apart, and that kind of irked me. I mean, it's kind of cool getting the two sets, you know, that close together, but still, I, I mean, they could have done that a little bit better. Because there was entire areas where there was nothing good to get. So, this game so far, though, the spacing's great, I think. Alright. Moment of truth. Can I do this on the first try? What's the come of if this is your wish, so will be. done. What? Well, that was awfully fast. Where is he? There's a ship out there. There he is. I'm gonna play weak. Come on! Goddamn directionals. Alright, well that's enough of that. Until next video, this is Brother Yolo signing off.